Okay, so welcome to the first of what's going to be a few screencasts. I'm going to try and do something different. Uh, a number of my students asked me to put together some recordings of me working through code and showing examples of things that would supplement the lectures that we would have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an app and I'm going to try and use everything that we've done or many of the things that we've done through the first nine weeks. So all the way up to and including CSS, working with the DOM, HTML, etc. Lots of JavaScript and so on. So what I've done is I've put together a little uh, beginner app and it's right now there's very little to it. So I'll talk to you about what the concept is. Basically what I want to do is I want to play with a set of open data that the City of Toronto has made available. So if you drive around Toronto, there's all sorts of traffic cameras that are set up on intersections in the city. And it's really neat because they update every minute or every couple minutes. And so you have a pretty good sense of what's going on in the city at any given time. So I've got one of the cameras up here and you can see that the last time it updated was this. If I refresh it, let's see. Yeah, you can see that it's updated again now. So these aren't live videos, but the images get uploaded and put on the web and anybody can build something and do something with them. So what I thought would be interesting is if we built an, a web app that could take that camera data for the whole city, combine it with a map of the city and make it interactive and uh, it would let us do a bunch of things with data manipulation, lots of CSS, which is really what the focus of what I want to do right now is, and um, just let us experiment a bit. So I've got this uh, data already downloaded into our project. If you go to the City of Toronto's open data set for traffic cameras, they let you download the data in a number of formats. And I'm going to be working with the uh, JSON format here. And I've converted it into pure JavaScript, which I'll, I'll show you now. So in the project, we have um, just a few files. There's an index file where I've got um, some just the initial pieces of the app being loaded. I've got an empty JavaScript file where we're going to put our code and I've also got all of the City of Toronto camera data which I'll talk about in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this project. So I've got a package.json file here and I need to install it. So right now it's underlining in yellow because I don't have it installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to run the command to install everything. So npm install and press enter. And this will take a little while. So what it's going to do is it's going to create the node modules directory. And it's going to download and install all of the various dependencies that it has. So in our case, we're going to use this one dependency right here, light server, which is going to be used to allow us to write our code. And every time we save our files, it's going to update those files and we'll be able to see what's going on in real time. Okay, so I'll let this work away and we'll come back and work with this in a second. But let me just show you what's going on with these files. So in my index file here, I've got a basic HTML5 web page, so I've declared the doc type, and in my HTML I'm going to be working in English, so I've specified that the language for this web page is going to be English. And I've done all the things that we've talked about doing initially, so I've set up the character set for UTF-8, I have defined my viewport so that it's going to have proper scaling on mobile devices. This is really important when you're going to be loading something like this on a on a phone. You want to make sure that the browser is setting the the size of the viewport, the viewport being the visible region of the window. So the web page is much longer, but the visible region of the window, uh, I want it to be the size of my device. I've got a title and so on. And right now my page is empty. There's no content in the page, except that I've got these two scripts. So I'm loading the first script, which is my traffic camera data. And I'm loading that first because my second script is going to depend on the data that's in the first script. So we'll look at what these scripts have in a second. And this second script here is where I'm going to write all my code. So let's take a look at this traffic camera data itself. So what we get here is I have a variable traffic cameras equals and it contains 
objects. So each one of these objects is data about a particular intersection in the city or a particular camera in one of these intersections. And so what do we have? Every camera has a number. It has a name. So what, what intersection is it at? York Street and Bremner Boulevard. It has information about the latitude and longitude for the camera and in the intersection, which is going to be really useful for us because it's going to mean that we can use it to put it on a map. And then finally, it has information about different camera views in other directions from this intersection. So if you stood in this intersection and you looked north, or if you look to the east, south, or west, whether or not there's another camera that you could, you could look at. So I have a big comment up here at the top that talks about how this data is structured. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to clean this data up and make it usable for what we want to do with the the rest of our, our, uh, our project. So for now, I'm going to skip the details of this, but you'll know where it is. So it looks like my terminal has finished here and all my dependencies are installed. So here I have the node modules folder and it's installed all kinds of things that my web server is going to need, which is great. And now what I can do is I can run the start command npm start and that's going to begin my web server. So now my web server is running. I have a web server that's running at localhost 3000. And if I go and load the page, here is here's my web page. I don't want this browser, excuse me. Too many browsers. This is what I want right here. I have localhost 3000 running and if I make a change to any of my files so for example if I were to add some content to my web page here in my editor you're gonna see that it automatically has reloaded my browser and over here inside the page the new content is visible so this is perfect if you can get yourself to this point right now then you're gonna be ready to go on with me to the next step where we're gonna start cleaning up this data and getting it ready so that we could present it in the page.